Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I can't fit him all in. But um, today's going to be the Pegasus Unicorn. As you can see by his legs, he's going to be built in a continuous... We're not sewing the legs on. We're going to build him continuously. That includes the neck and the head are all not sewn on. They're all built continuously. So... Let's just jump right into this. I'm going to make this particular one pink and white. Um, he was blue and white. So we're going to start with the legs. I'm going to do one with you and then you can do the rest of them um, on your own. You're going to need a 5 millimeter or an H hook. You're going to need a stitch marker. And obviously a pair of scissors, I don't think I need to tell you that. Um, a row counter might be helpful as well. So we're going to start with whatever um, color you want, the hoofs, the horn, and then as far as the wings and the hair, it's a combination of both colors. So you just need to decide what color um, you want your horse and your hoofs and stuff. Um, and we're starting with that color. So you're going to make a magic ring. And you're going to put six single crochets in here. Pull that close. So we're building an amigurumi style as usual with, for my channel. Um, so you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. We're just going to do the norm. So I'm just going to count to 12 instead of using my stitch marker. But if you're going to use a stitch marker, it goes in after the first stitch, not the second one. So this little strand tells me I'm back around to where I need to be. And I pull my mitter, my middle, my mitter closed. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. This will bring you up to 18 stitches. So I can count 18 or I'll use my stitch marker. If I wasn't on camera generally I would just count 3, 6, 9, you know. So one single crochet and then your next stitch is an increase. So that sequence is a combination, adds up to three. So that's why I go three, six, nine, twelve, and on. And that's how I generally count. Um, stitch markers just get in my way. <laughs> but for the video, and repeat this. So one single crochet and an increase all the way around. For the next three rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So next three rows, one single crochet in each stitch, and I will see you on the other side. So um, get your white. What the heck is going on with my white? Yeah, this might be a problem later on. So my white's all jacked up. But anyway, get your white. So we're going to change colors right now. 
to the white. So go in, pull up a loop. Don't finish that stitch. We're gonna finish. Well, we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna finish the stitch. We're just gonna do it with the weight. So just pull down on everything. You'll have to weave in a bit. So we're gonna do a one single crochet decrease. We've already done your number one. You don't really need a stitch marker because it's a color change. But that's our first stitch. So your next stitch will be with your new color, and that'll be a decrease. And you're going to repeat that all the way around and your decrease. So your decrease is you go into your first stitch, you pull up a loop. You go into your second stitch, you pull up a loop. And then you pull through all three. So we're going to do that all the way around and this brings you back down to 12 stitches. A little awkward with weaving, but this is the only part that we have to do this. We're going to be on white for quite a while. Well, I mean other than your other legs. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this pink off now that I'm just about back around. I don't need it anymore. I'll get that right out of there. I'm just going to stick my white down in there and be done with that too. So, my last stitch. And from here, your next 12 rows is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So easy to remember, 12 rows, 12 stitches. This is where the row counter comes in handy. So, don't forget to stuff along the way. And I will see you on the other side. So I am done my leg. If you start counting, you can see here where you did your color change. If you have 13 rows, then you've you've got your you're right. Everything's right. Um, I got 13. This is your one single crochet decrease, and this was your 12 rows of regular one single crochet in each stitch. So I stuffed mine as I went. Now, um, I'm going to let you go and do all your other three legs, um, and every single one of them, you're going to go into the next stitch, you're going to fasten off, and all you need is a little bit of a sewing tail. That is it. So, go ahead and make your three legs. Make sure you have sewing tails on every single one of them. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, I got all my legs done. Put all my little sewing tails and everything is stuffed the same or close to it anyway. So let's set this aside. We're going to make what I call a body bridge. So it's just a very simple piece of yarn that we're going to crochet or well fabric. And then we're going to sew the legs to that body bridge. So don't be intimidated by this if there's any beginners out there because it's pretty easy peasy. But do it in the color that you're doing your horse in. So you're just going to make a slip knot. And you're going to chain 21.
that's my 21. So now you're going to do 20 crochet, 20 single crochets back up to the top. That's my 20. You're going to chain one and turn. And you're going to do 20 single crochets. Chain one and turn. You're going to do this for four rows. So, counting this row is five all together. So, one single crochet in each stitch, chain one and turn. Four rows, and I will see you on the other side. So I am done my body bridge. I'm not fastening off. I need to keep that part. So you're going to need to get a needle of some sort. And then each of these legs is going to get sewn to each end. So then this, let me show you the other one, becomes this. Do you see what we're doing? So I use four stitches for each leg. So pretty easy peasy, just Obviously, I'll line your thing up. You're going to use four stitches. So it doesn't matter which four stitches you use. You're just going to use four. Mine is coming out of this section here, but I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pick up the first stitch. And then I'm going to go into where I just was. And I'm going to pick up the second stitch. So I'm just whip stitching. Now I'm going to go to the third stitch. I'm only doing four. Then I'm going to do the fourth stitch. And that is it. That's how I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to come across one more time under a couple of these pieces. I just want to make a small wee little knot that no one's ever going to know is there. Because we're not crocheting over this. We're crocheting around it. And then that gets stuck down in with your stuffing and forgotten about. So this is what you're going to do with all four of your legs so that you can see the leg. It's not going to be on this side. You'll never see that again. So next leg, I have too much stuffing. And get a little awkward to hold on to. So the next leg is going to be a little backwards. So count your four stitches. One, two, three, four. So you know where you're starting. And again, I started one over from where my yarn was. Three. And number four is the slip knot here. Now because it's my slip knot from before and I don't really want it to come undone I'm just going to tie that actually tie it in a double knot you won't have to make a knot let's do it the smart way let's work smart not hard a little double knot stick your stuff down in there stick your stuff in your filling okay. Just keep in mind, it doesn't really matter what this looks like because you're going to be crocheting around the leg. So you're going to come from here and go around. You're not ever going to see that. It's going to be inside the doll. So we'll do the other back end here. And I'm going to do this in a little bit of fast motion. Oh, 
also doesn't matter how tight this is at all. Oh, I just sewed that on backwards. Oh my gosh, did I? Yeah, I just sewed this on backwards. Let me fix. I should probably pay closer attention to what I'm doing. So if you're like me and you're an idiot, how did I do that? Oh, because it got all turned around. It is a little hard to control, and even when we, we're going to start crocheting, it's going to be... I'm going to leave this blooper in the video, too, by the way, so you can see how easy it is to make a mistake. Oh my gosh. It is awkward. It is very awkward to do. Seems like such a simple process, and then you go and you put it on backwards. But thankfully, it can be fixed. Just about everything that could go wrong in crochet can be fixed. If it can't be, then, I mean, you just throw it out and start again. But, generally, I find, because, I mean, it's not my first mistake, and it's probably not going to be my last mistake. I make all kinds, just like everybody else. There we go. That's a little bit of a smarter smarter thing. So this is where our um, hook is going to go back in. So um, you can still sew in that area. So do the same thing. Don't let this little loop get in your way. You can still use it after. You just got to make sure you don't sew it in. And trust me, this is going to be all worth it. Because it's super duper cool to have a continuous build so you don't have to sew your legs on and stuff like that. It's just such a pain in the butt, especially when you don't sew. So this is what it should look like. So here comes the awkward part. <laughs> We're just going to do one single crochet. Let me get untangled here. So we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Now when I did my other one I got 77 stitches. I don't know if you're going to get 77 stitches. I'm not sure how you sewed your legs on. Moving forward this will be um, your our numbers may or may not match and it all depends on how you sewed your legs on. If you use the four stitches then it, it all should work out fine. So we're going to put a stitch marker into this first stitch And we are going to crochet around the leg, down the body, bridge, around the leg, across. So we got to create stitches here. Around the leg, down the body, bridge, around the leg, and create stitches here. So this stitch that we just did, it'll be a little twisted from moving this around so much, but we're not going to end up using it. We're going to use this first stitch we put the marker into, but this weird stitch here, we're just going to create a stitch in place of that twisted one. There was no way of getting around the twisted stitch. So for the next five rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these stitches. So going around and down that makes sense. Around the leg, down the body bridge. It is very awkward until you start building it up a little bit and then it's not so bad. So here, in this weird spot, you're just going to grab these two pieces. Where's my... Okay, well, I've lost my needle, but... Um, 
these. Uh, it's awkward already. I haven't even started. So when you get to this leg part, you're going to grab those two stitches for a stitch and put one in there. And then continue. That'll bring the, the leg and the body together. If you don't get caught on everything. And then just continue around. So I'm back around to my other leg. And again, we're going to have probably a weird spot where we got to put a stitch in where a stitch shouldn't go only because we want to hold it together properly with no holes so there's a couple of pieces of yarn right there so make a stitch if we bypass this we will have a couple of small little holes and I don't think you really want that so we're just going to create stitches in those little crooks All right, here we are again where we're going to have to make a stitch. So there's a little wee spot here. I can just force a stitch into. And then we need to create stitches. So just wherever you can stick your hook into, you're going to create a stitch. I'm getting snagged on stuff. So wherever you just stick your hook in and create a stitch. And then another weird spot, uh, you can just create a stitch like we did with those pieces of yarn and then back to normal. You're going to need, um, for the rounds coming up, you're going to need a few stitch markers. So, um, after you're done your five rows, well, four after this, because I'm doing this one with you, but, um, you're going to need, I'm going to say three or four. I don't remember. So, we have another weird spot. So now one side of this body bridge is going to be part of what you chained. So it's going to leave a little bit of a bigger gap, but once it's all said and done, you're not really going to see that. So don't freak out about it. No way of getting around that either. So. So, like I said, this is very awkward. And back to the other leg where I'm going to put in a stitch, grabbing those two pieces of yarn. You know how every project has an awkward stage? Yeah, this is it for this one. After that, it's pretty... Oh, no, there might be a second awkward stage when we go to do its head. It can be a little awkward, but not as bad as this. This seems very awkward to me. I'm just going to tuck my tail down in there so I don't snag. So we got to put a fake stitch in here, too, somewhere. To keep it symmetrical and then create stitches all along here. Try not to go too low with them, like try to stay near the edge. So, again, I don't know how many stitches you use to sew your legs on, and I don't know how many stitches you've created along the top, so giving you numbers is probably not going to work out. Um, 
but I'll still I'll give you my numbers so 77 stitches is what I had on my last one I may or may not even have the same on this one but go ahead and you have four more rows to do I just did this one with you we need five all together and I will see you on the other side so this is what it should look like um, now I had my first stall that I made I had 77 stitches this one I actually had 84 so even the numbers that I wrote down aren't gonna work out so we're gonna need a couple of stitch markers we need to start decreasing but we're only gonna be decreasing in a certain spot and because our numbers are not going to match, we need to mark it for that certain spot. So, we are decreasing starting with the butt. So, we'll say your stitch marker up here is going to be your head and neck. So, this guy is going to be your butt. On your butt, On your butt, you're going to do a do two a little la la, two single crochet decrease, and I needed to do it three times. So we're going to start with our stitch marker probably way over here, but we've got to try to make it even. So two decrease, two decrease, two decrease. So here and here is where your stitch mark. Well, you don't need one over here but put your stitch marker so that when you start doing your initial decrease it's going to be even so that's one two decrease so use these two stitches one two decrease these two stitches you need four stitches each sequence one two decrease so I'm gonna end there so I'm going to start there and I'm going to end there, which is just about even. If I move that over one, I'm still going to be uneven. So as long as it's somewhat even that you're going to decrease just in this part and you're going to do two single crochet decrease three times. So you need 12 stitches. Counting this one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I'm going to end here with my decrease. So I won't be giving you numbers. Ish. I won't even be giving you the numbers I had written down because mine aren't even the same as my first doll. So you're going to single crochet to this marker that we just put in. And that's fine because if you make more than one of these dolls then um, you're going to know how to find the spots that you need to decrease. So, hence it being a tutorial. If I just told you numbers, I'm not really not teaching you anything. We're only going to be decreasing the chest part once, or maybe twice, but I mean that's going to be the whole horse, not just the chest part, I don't think. I don't remember. I made this a few weeks ago. But um the butt we're gonna be that's gonna be our main focus for our decreases. So this marker's gonna have to stay. Even if we're doing one single crochet in each stitch around, the marker still has to stay there because we're gonna be going back to a decrease on the butt. And I'll tell you the reason for that later. So I'm at my stitch marker. I'm going to start my two single crochet decrease. So that's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease. And again, two single crochets and a decrease. Two single crochets and a decrease. 
one more time. Did I say three or four? Well, I'm doing four in a decrease. So from there to there, which is almost even, is your decrease. And then you can single crochet all the way back to your marker. My battery is going to die, so I will see you on the other side. All right, so I'm back around. And so your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these stitches. I obviously had 74 written down from my last time, but <laughs> I don't think that's going to be accurate anymore. But you know what? It doesn't screw my horse up. So that's why I keep trying to tell you guys numbers are not that important. It still looks like a horse regardless. So when I get to this marker, I'm not decreasing. I'm just going, I'm going to remove it and put it back in and then continue with my one single crochet. We're not decreasing, but don't take the marker out and toss it aside. We, you need to put this back in. So I had 80, one single crochet in each stitch, I had 80 stitches. So we're going to one single crochet all the way over to this marker and we're going to decrease the butt again and then crochet back around. So we're just decreasing the butt. Sorry I'm talking with a stitch marker in my mouth. So one single crochet in each stitch over to your butt marker. All right, I'm at my butt marker. So for every single decrease that we do on the butt is gonna be the exact same thing. So we're gonna do two single crochet decrease, two single crochet decrease, and one more time. So this round will be three times. So now we need 12 stitches, which is what I was reading the last time when I meant four times. So this time is three times. For real. So that's number one. That's two single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. One, two, decrease. One more time. One, two, decrease. So, um, for my other horse, I was doing invisible decreases. I'll show you here, even though I don't need to do a decrease. But an invisible decrease is just using the first um, loop, the front loop, not the first loop, and then doing your decrease. So, that's all it is. But, in using, I've made the one horse using the invisible decrease and it made absolutely no difference in the appearance so um, that's why I'm not doing it for this one because it did, 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 did not I cannot talk today did not make any difference at all so um, you can just single crochet back up to your chest one single crochet in each stitch
So we're back around. This is what it should look like, which isn't much different than what it did. Um, if you wanted to start putting stuffing into your legs and filling those up, um, just make sure that you are getting into the leg parts properly because that's going to be the hardest part of your stuffing is getting into this part of the leg properly. Um, it's very super duper important that you do this right because you're not going to get another chance just like anything else that you make. But if you want this horse to stand up on his own, you need to make sure that this part of the leg is getting stuffed properly. Super duper important. I cannot stress it enough. All right, so I've got my legs pretty solid, I would think. You're gonna have to keep checking them because stuffy might pop out as we go. So this round is just gonna be one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Again, take this out, do your stitch, put it back because we're not done yet. And I will see you on the other side. So this round is going to be a little bit different. We are going to decrease the chest area and the butt area. So, sorry, first we'll do the butt. I know I say that we are butt. So, single crochet, one each stitch all the way around. Uh, do you see, I just want to point out what a much better look you get not sewing the legs on but crocheting them on way better so single crochet all the way around to your marker and I will meet you there so I'm back around in my marker and I'm gonna do my two single crochet decrease twice so that's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease. And then repeat. One, two, and your decrease. And now, let's stop this for a second. We're going to single crochet all the way back around. But now the front, we need to do two single crochet decrease twice. This guy's gonna have to move because we need to make this even for our decrease. So take him out. He doesn't matter anymore. You're gonna need two stitch markers. This is gonna be to signify where you start, where you started your decrease here, just so you know where to stop single crocheting. So we're gonna do two single crochet decrease and we're gonna do it two times. So somewhere you need to have eight stitches. So somewhere in the center. So that's eight stitches. Two single crochets, decrease, two single crochets, and a decrease. So now that I've found my eight stitches that are in my center, I'm going to mark this guy. That's my number one stitch. And then I'm going to mark this guy. So he's the stitch after my decrease, so that's going to be my new starting and stopping point for the project. Do you get what I'm saying? So now, from ending this decrease, we're going to single crochet one in each stitch all the way up to this marker. And then we're going to stop. So hopefully all your markers are different colors, because they kind of need to be. So your yellow is your main starting and stopping point for your whole entire project, even though we just moved in. 
the purple marker is my butt marker and the blue marker is my chest marker that's not going to stay here forever we just need to keep it here for now we will be removing it and going back to just these two after so one single crochet in each all the way up to your chest marker so once you learn how to do something like this you can do it all by yourself and it's going to be much much better and I know it might seem a little confusing but actually with the markers I'm trying to make it less confusing but I can't make everybody happy so please do not attack me in the comments And yes, this will be a long video because I'm actually teaching you how to do something. I'm not just showing you how to make something. I'm teaching you how to do something. So, I'm at my chest marker. And I need to do my two single crochet decrease. So that's number one. That's two and a decrease. And again, one more time. That's two and a decrease. So now we're back to our starting and stopping marker. And our next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch around. So as far as this guy, we're done with him. We don't need our chest marker anymore. That's all we needed him for. We still need our butt marker. So again, one stitch around in every stitch. Take this out, put it back in. So our next round is easy peasy as well. We're not just decreasing the butt, we're going to decrease all the way around. But I still need you to keep this in. <laughs> so um, I need you to do a, now you're probably not going to be able to, I don't know what your numbers are, but you're probably not going to be able to finish the sequence. But I want you to do a five single crochet decrease all the way around now if you have extra stitches over here when you come back around just put one single crochet in each of them if you can't finish your sequence it's no big deal um, I've never been able to finish my sequence and I've my horse still looks fine so five single crochet decrease number one is your marker So that's five single crochets and then my decrease all the way around. So I can't finish my sequence as I figured so I'm just going to have the last three stitches I'm just going to put single crochets in them. So, move it along quite nicely. Your next round is going to be decreasing the butt again. So, one single crochet in each stitch till you get to your butt marker. So, in case you want to know, Mine's 25 stitches from my main marker to my butt marker. It's 25 stitches. So you're going to do two single crochet decrease. You're going to do it two times. It's always the same decrease with every single round. And I'll tell you why in a second while we're doing it. 
So that's two single crochets and then your decrease. And one more time. One, two single crochets and then your decrease. So the reason why we're doing this is because we don't, it's continuous. So I need the hole to be closer to the head than the butt. I don't need the hole in the middle. I need to keep decreasing the butt to bring the hole over. Does that make any sense? That's why we're doing this. You'll see as we get deeper into this project, you'll see what I mean. Um, so now I just want you to single crochet all the way back around to your main marker. So our next round is going to be, the whole entire thing is going to be four single crochet and a decrease all the way around. Again, go around this guy but put him back in and when you get back to your marker, you're probably going to notice that you cannot finish the sequence. So just put whatever extra stitches you have, just put one single crochet in them. So four single crochet and a decrease all the way around. Again, I don't know what your numbers are, but um, I was able to do this nine times. And then I still had to put two single crochets in at the end, but we'll see what happens. Markers number one. That's four single crochets and then my decrease. So I'll do this all the way around and I will see you on the other side. So I'm back around and I only have one single crochet to put in there, not two this time around. So as you can see, our butt is coming in closer to here, which is what we want. So your next round is going to be from your main marker to your butt marker and then your decrease and then back around. So one single crochet to your butt marker. So that's 19 to my marker now. And again, I'm going to do two single crochets and a decrease two times. And now I just want you to do one single crochet back up to your main marker. And that's 23 back to my main marker. So your next round and the last round before we sew the butt up is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. And then we're going to come back and we're going to sew the butt. So this marker doesn't need to be in there anymore. So one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So I have 48 stitches. Yours are probably not the same. Could be the same. Don't know if it's the same. So we need to start stuffing this guy because we need to start. We're going to do a little bit of sewing. Um, we're not fastening off though. You're going to keep your thingy on. Um, but be very careful on how you stuff this guy. He has to be stuffed properly. So sorry. I'm wobbling. Um, so I need you to just be cautious on how you stuff him. It's probably going to take some time to get him stuffed properly and then I'll meet you back here and we can, especially the butt, and then I'll meet you back here and we can sew him up together.
again making sure these legs are properly filled so okay I'm got mine stuffed um, as far as I want to stuff him I just want to make sure his butt is stuffed keep in mind there's gonna be a great big tail here too so um, you need to get some weight for sewing so you'll need another use use another roll or the outside if you're pulling from the middle of a wound ball then you can just use the outside you're gonna make a slip knot on one end and on the other end you're gonna thread so go into your doll Let me turn the light down a little bit just so it might be easier to see. So go into your doll from the inside out. Pull till you get to that slip knot and then put your needle through the loop. And then pull. So now this tail just is going to get shoved into the stuffing. And you'll never see that again. So, we are going to, we need to leave 18 stitches around this hole. So we're going to sew all the way up till we have 18 stitches. So I just want you to count 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, 14, 16. Oh, that was a good guess. That's 18 stitches. So I'm going to put my stitch marker to hold these two ends together. And I'm just going to double count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And then the two stitches there. So I'm going to have to probably come down one, one more. So figure out where your 18 stitches is going to lie. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Close enough. Um, and you're going to sew from here to here and close this up. But we're going to do it in a way where it's not, it's not going to be rude. It's going to be decently you know, closed up. So there's a number of ways you can do this. You can use a mattress stitch. You can do, use a whip stitch, but either way, you're going to go in. Oh, I already tangled and I haven't even started. You're going to go in one side and then the next side and then the next side. So this side, then the next side. That's kind of a whip stitch across the across the pond whip stitch. So you might have a little bump there, but keep in mind no one's ever gonna see it once the tail goes on. So if you did a mattress stitch you could probably get away with not having that. I don't know. I've never done a mattress stitch. I just did a whip stitch ish. I'm going under all four pieces so a whip stitch is still um, back loop to back loop but I am going under all four so technically it's not a whip stitch either. Sew it up any way you want to sew it up um, with the wings and everything it's not gonna, you're not gonna see it. It's not gonna be noticeable. So it doesn't really matter. That's why I just chose to do a simple stitch. Well, I mean, not that everything else is not simple, especially for me. I don't sew well, but a mattress stitch would probably look good. But again, you don't really need it to look good because 
Wings are going here, tail's going there. And this stitch isn't bad, it actually doesn't look that bad. So, so once you're up to your marker, I'm just going to go one more time. I want to do a little wee knot that you're not going to see. It's going to be the smallest of smallest knots. But I'm going to wiggle back and forth so I tighten that knot right down. And then I'm going to weave just like we do with everything else that we make. We weave. So I'm going to weave and that knot gets sucked right in there so you don't see it. So you can weave as much as you want or as little as you want. It's completely up to you. Um, I'm not done stuffing this yet so I'm just going to continue to weave toward the back because that's where most of my stuffing is. I got to finish what I was doing. See that didn't even get into the stuffing at all. So um, if you feel like you've pulled too tight. Oh my gosh, I feel like I got two left hands. They can just pull it out a bit. I'm putting stuffing in this, so it doesn't really matter. And that is how we do a continuous, so now we have our head hole. And that's my stitches, so not bad. They don't look that bad at all. I'm going to turn my light back up. And I'm going to finish stuffing this. Um, and this is probably all the time we have for this video. So we'll get started on the head in part two. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in part two.